So now that we have finished our activity of the recipe, if you remember really well the exercise that we sent prior to today's session, one of them is a Padlet link where we asked you to put the worst case scenarios that could happen in a project. And these worst case scenarios happen because of poor planning, poor implementation, or uh, other causes. However, something that I was very happy to hear today is the uh, anticipating risks, which Dora mentioned previously. So this activity serves this exact purpose, to think about possible scenarios that can go wrong, to identify the cause of the problem, to find quick solutions, because we do not give up. We don't quit. Remember this. Whatever a problem happens, we put our efforts together to go back on track and to find an alternative. And how can we, in future cases, avoid this scenario? So let me just share with you my screen to show you the um, very good suggestions. I was really happy to go through them, to be honest, because it shows that you gave it some time to think about it. So these are the categories for our viewers on Facebook. We ask the participants to take some time to think of scenarios that can go wrong. And we tried to uh, divide them to categories. So the first one is logistics and then external communication with local communities. And I can see so many good examples. I'm very proud of you. And you can also see here conflict management, which is something that according to Kat's recipe, we should freeze. And here you have the budget which is an activity that we spent quite some time now on, and the content, which is also very important. It's something that would motivate the members, would make sure that it's something that they go out from this program with rich content to use in the future. The participants profile, good. We should think about who are the participants, what are their characteristics, and what is their motivation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for doing your exercise with so much commitment and uh, uh, passion. Now I will explain to you the next activity, which is a group activity. We will send you very soon to breakout groups. And in this breakout group, you'll be working together on a scenario of a project that went wrong. And it's up to you to find the cause of why this scenario went wrong. So let me just share with you my screen to give you an example and to show this example to our viewers on Facebook. So you'll click on the link. In order to access it and in order to be able to edit it, you just click on Open with Google Doc. And that's how you can actually edit the content of this document. The template is as follows. We have a short description of the scenario at the top. And right next to it, we have boxes. You need to fill these box with the content according to the question at the top. What is the main problem in the scenario? Who are the parties involved in this scenario? Who is responsible, the main responsible for the problem? It can also be one of the parties. And how can we find a quick solution to the problem? Last but not least, what should be done to avoid this problem? This is a very good activity for you as project coordinators or as members of the organizations to think about these scenarios. So um, if you have, if you don't have any questions, uh, I will just send you to the breakout group and you will have around 20 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes to think about uh, this activity and to fill it. Again, I will just share with you some quick uh, suggestions to facilitate your work, assign a representative of the group to uh, write the content and try to involve each one of you in the discussion to make sure that it is rich. And I will just send you now to your breakout. Uh, we will share with you the links to the um, template once you join the breakout room. So see you very soon. Enjoy your trip to your breakout room. Put on your seatbelt and see you soon.
Welcome back. Linus. Welcome back, everybody. Mauro, Mauro, Mauro. <laughs> Hello, Linus. I'm fine, I'm fine. I had to really come running to join this meeting. It was traffic, but finally I've made it. I'm sorry for being late. Welcome, welcome, Linus. Thank you. So welcome back, everybody. I believe this activity was enjoyable because I can see a lot of content on the scenarios. And I was really happy to see all the notes taken from each group. They were super rich. And I would love now to hear from you, the representatives of each group. We had three groups and each group had the scenario. So maybe the structure would be to just say hi, your name, the name, uh, your group number, the scenario, and just a brief overview of what you had. Try to limit it in one minute and a half so we can finish on time or maybe one minute. So to just, just give us a brief overview. And I'll stop here. I have the name so I could just assign somebody from each group and ask them if you'd like. Oh. I can but start I, if you want. Like... Good, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yes. Basically, our problem was uh, like that one of the participants of our project needs to go to the hospital, but we have just one coordinator and like we cannot stop the work in the, I imagined a work camp. So we cannot stop the work, the work in, the, in the camp. So the coordinator is alone, should go with the, participants to the hospital because the participant doesn't speak the local language. So we have also this problem. Uh, so basically uh, the idea it should be to have another coordinator just to divide the tasks. Or if we don't have it, we should like uh, give more responsibility to the, to the group. So we should use the group as a resource and like try to find a solution. So asking for help, maybe the coordinator could ask to a participants to be a coordinator for one day if the coordinator needs to go to the hospital with the participants or if it's not possible uh, ask to a local a local person to go to the hospital with the participants so maybe this person can can help with the language or um, try to find like a break during lunch or in the evening or early in the morning to go with the volunteer to the hospital so yeah, I'm sorry if I talked so fast, but I was like, <laughs> we don't have a lot of time. So you I hope it was clear. <laughs> you did an excellent job. And I really like your suggestion of, or your group suggestion of having the coordinator teach somebody else how to take the responsibility and be a coordinator. And uh, that's, that's good. So the camp is also a learning opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, moving to the next group. Jonathan? Um, yeah, sure, I'll speak. Um, so we were talking about, uh, we're organizing a work camp for refugees and uh, we had agreed uh, with a local producer for canned food to donate some packages. Uh, however, uh, the food that arrived uh, mostly came as, yeah, mostly pork. Uh, and we're dealing with a lot of uh, refugees who uh, come from different backgrounds who don't eat pork. So also this is donation was announced on TV and made it very big public. Um, so um, what is the main problem in this scenario, of course, is the communication between our partners and the local organization um, of the cultural needs of the group uh, of the people who received the donations. Um, so our parties involved are four parties, um, the participants, the organizers, the local producer, and the TV team. 
um, who is responsible for the problem. The organizer is responsible for not considering the refugees' needs and telling the producer of the needs uh, or who the target group would be. Um, how can we find a quick solution to this problem? Uh, apologize to the refugees, uh, for one, for the mistake, and provide a new source of food that is fitting to their needs. Have a cultural awareness of the community you are working with, essentially. Um, and what should be done to avoid this problem? When organizing donations, uh, ask for feedback uh, and recommendations from the refugees themselves, <clears throat> and to know uh, and to only ask for specific needs from the producers or to go to specific producers. Example, halal kosher producers, to be sure that in future you do not make this uh, mistake again. Thank you, Jonathan and group number three for the excellent work. And this scenario just shows how important it is to prepare and to bear in mind understanding the needs of your targeted population. So moving on to group number one, uh, please, uh, who is the representative of the group? The floor is yours. Group number one had okay. the largest number Thank of you. participants. Yeah, Hamza, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Khadija. So yeah, the, the problem is uh, some participants were uh, participating in a, uh, in a work camp and were not told what to expect when they arrived in terms of accommodation and activities. And they expected to stay in a hotel and have, uh, and have fun. Uh, so this is the, the, main, the main problem actually. And uh, uh, about the responsible of the, for this problem actually is the organizers, they did not will uh, write actually the, the, the info pack about the accommodation and the activities and just to, 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 to tell the participants what they expect when they come to, to this work camp. And at the same time, there's a responsibility uh, from the side of the sending, uh, from the sending organization, they did not ask the, the hosting organization to to clarify uh, these these two components, the accommodation and the activities, and to find a quick solution. I think because it's already happened. So just to explain the situation for the participants and about the values and it's not about about the just to say in five stars hotel or in a castle in my in which area. So just to explain the situation and the aim of, of these kind of, of activities. And it's a good lesson for the whole parties actually just to learn for the future to avoid that. And just to avoid the problem, as I, as I said, is just to, to write the, the, the info pack with, with everything, with the very small uh, details. Thank you very much. I don't know if someone would like to add for this. Good job, Hamza, and nice work, group number one. I had a look at all the notes that the groups have taken, and it just shows how great you are working as teams. And please take this opportunity of this program for networking to maintain the connections among this group and to work on future projects together. This was amazing. Thank you so, so much. I had a lot of fun just listening to you and moderating these activities. You are amazing participants, and I'm so lucky to be among you. I will just give the floor to Katz to wrap up the day, and I hope that you don't mind if we exceed the timing for five extra minutes since we started a few minutes late. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding. Katz, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Khadija. Um, so yes, today was a very uh, packed day. We tried to, together with Khadija to uh, make it as um, practical as possible uh, because it involves uh, it involved the day a lot of um, budgeting, a lot of uh, thinking about Plan B, worst case scenarios, how to improve them, about great ingredients that you could put in in your projects to make them. Um, to make them uh, useful for the participants and also for the communities. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, active participation day coming and going in from breakout rooms. 